for its rich world history centering around the massive Roman Empire, a history that's still alive and well in the Eternal City today. And can be explored in the many ruins. That's called the Roman Forum. The Colosseum is huge! Arts, classes, and reenactments. Plus with pasta, Italian pizza, yummy fresh cheese and fruits, and gelato. There's plenty of taste to tempt tiny palates. One, Conquer it all in Travel with Kids Room. Room. I'm Nathan and I'm Seamus and we're Mom and Dad. We're traveling around the world discovering amazing countries, new cultures, and really wild experiences together. Come along with us as we learn all about our planet and about being together as a family. As we discover the wonders of the world, the wonders of nature, and sometimes wonder, what were we thinking? In Travel with Kids. Rome is one of the largest cities in the world and is teeming with people, both locals and tourists. There's a small underground rail system which is easy to use, but fairly limited. Buses are a good option, but can be quite overcrowded. Open-top buses are fun for kids, but touristy. While they might cost a bit more, the fastest and easiest way to get around is by taxi. We've arrived by train from Venice, a fast and easy trip on the trains. We're staying in an apartment which we booked through Parker Villas. Roman Holiday, this beautiful apartment, just off Piazza Navona, center to all of Rome's attractions. The villa offers plenty of room for the whole family, plus a kitchen and dining area, so we can eat some meals in, which saves some money. And washer and dryer so we can actually pack light and do laundry as we travel. After settling into our villa, we head out by foot, another great way to get around Rome, especially if you plan your days to visit attractions all in one area, to explore the city, starting with our own Piazza Navona. Piazza Navona was built on the site of an ancient stadium. It's now an example of Baroque architecture. Cool stuff in the piazza includes this fountain of four rivers and a big Egyptian obelisk, also look out for the Fountain of Neptune. This style, found all over Rome, was made famous by a sculptor named Bernini. In the small cobbled streets around Piazza Navona, the kids find a map in a shop window that shows them what Rome once looked like. This is where they have chariot races. This is where gladiator fights. And this is where they have church. Oh, wow. To get a better idea of Rome's history, we decide to view the 3D movie, Time Elevator Rome. We load into moving cars with 3D glasses and we're bumped around through an on-screen journey through Rome's history. While this is a unique way to learn history, the film is somewhat loud and graphic for younger kids and is a bit overpriced. If you're pressed for time, a better investment is the book Rome Reconstructed. This is a great book for kids who visit Rome. It shows all the main tourist sites as they would have been in ancient Rome and how they look now. So it really brings the whole vision together for the kids. Which can be found in many gift shops around town, including the time elevators. We usually go for independent travel, exploring on our own with a guidebook at our own pace. But in the case of Rome, we've decided a guide would be great. Rome is huge and can be overwhelming. After all, most of the history of the world is right here. Because Rome is such a big city with so many monuments with stories to tell, we decide to hire a guide from Walks Inside Rome, which offers a specialized children's tour. Salvatore, our guide, picks us up and takes us to a local taverna where he explains each dish. He's been doing this for quite a while and knows the city and its people inside and out. This is called Macaroni alla Madriciana. It's uh, one of the old dishes 
when Italy was very poor. And of course, uh, these were very simple dishes. Are you going to show me how to make pizza? Yeah. Yeah? How do you make pizza? Trying the local Backstreet Tavernas is a real treat, and kids will surprise you what they'll try, especially when they're hungry. And don't worry, there's always pizza. And the cook shows us the kitchen. Roasted flour. Flour is spicy and flour is normal. Mushroom, fresh tomato, and also over there, arugula. It's dark. Homemade mm. pasta. I'm having lasagna. Mm. Really good. Okay, you want to do it? Let's see how you do it. And just like the gladiators of ancient Rome, after a huge feast, we head for the Colosseum. The Colosseum is huge! Arrgh, Wesley! <laughs> And while the Colosseum could seat well over 50,000 people, tickets were hard to get, and it's no different today. You can expect long lines at the ticket office and the entrance, but you can skip the lines by using the Roma Pass, a multi-attraction pass, or you can reserve your tickets online for a specific day and time of entry. But Sal from Walks Inside Rome can also get us right in and right past the lines. Completed in 80 AD, the Colosseum has come to be an iconic image of Rome. But this was well into the history of the Roman Empire. According to legend, Rome was founded in the 8th century BC by Romulus, grandson of the Greek goddess Aphrodite. During this time, the city was made up of seven separate settlements on the seven hills of Rome. Well, some six kings later, the Roman Republic was founded. The Republic was made up of elected senators to rule the country. And over the next few hundred years, the Roman Empire expanded, eventually including the entire Italian peninsula, areas of North Africa, Asia, and most of Europe. It was at this time that it also moved from a republic to a government ruled by an emperor. It was Emperor Vespasian who started the Colosseum and his son Titus who completed it eight years later. The Colosseum measures about 500 feet across and soars almost 150 feet into the sky. That's about the height of a 15-story building. The giant elliptical-shaped building was used to perform classical mythology, recreated battle scenes, and even mock sea battles. But its most famous use was for gladiator battles. Sal does a great job of painting a picture of what the Colosseum looked like in ancient Rome. Imagine that this uh, lower section was completely covered up by a wooden platform. How, are they going to put floor all the way? That just shows you how it would have looked. They used to have on these uh, wooden platform uh, traps like this, uh, in which uh, down below they used to have uh, cages, and they used to lift the cages up and the animals uh, appeared from the bottom. So most of the lions would just come out and eat the gladiators? Gladiators used to fight with the animals. Including where the emperors, senators, and other celebrity types sat pampered in the shade. And then uh, look at the most uh, interesting thing on this building. It had a roof. Uh-huh. And you know that this was a retractable roof. Uh? So after Sal's history lesson and reading a few books we got before we came, we always recommend getting books about the destination you're visiting so the kids get an idea of the history and culture of each country. I give the kids a short pop quiz. A point goes to you guys that Julius Caesar. Oh, what's that? Christian Dukat. Uh, okay, wait. Emperor Wrong millennium, Seamus. But nice try. Come on, guys, two more. No, no. Julius Caesar. Constantine. Good. Constantine. And. Wow. 
Nero. Playing games helps learning, and their imaginations are sparked. They instantly get into the role of emperor. I, the emperor, command you to go in the Colosseum. But this is one emperor whose fate you probably don't want. Countries, Romans, countrymen, or friends? French. <laughs> French. I said friends, not friends. <laughs> Piers. <laughs> okay. Someone give me a knife. Will you lend me your ear? Ooh, hopefully not. <laughs> The Shakespeare play Nathan quoted from is Julius Caesar, who, like many of the ancient Roman stories, had a passionate life and a tragic death. So, old Paris guy, when do you want your ears back? Well, like a month, because... Okay, I'll keep them correct. In addition to teaching the kids about history and architecture, Sal gives them some language lessons as well. The wooden platform was covered up by sand, sand in order to suck the blood. Sand. Yes. And sand in Latin we call arena. How you call in English these buildings? Arena. That's where the name arena comes from. And he points out some features that would keep little boys interested. Public bathrooms which they used to have all a bench seat with a hall. The kids are intrigued. What kids wouldn't be with emperors and gladiators and epic battles? Quite a real-life classroom for the kids. And Nathan tells us what he's learned so far. The Roman Empire started here in Rome, and they built the Roman Colosseum. The Roman Colosseum was built by the Romans that lived in Rome. And they ate Roman food and fought Roman gladiator fights and did Roman stuff. So when in Rome, you have to be a Roman. And now I'm going to go roam around. There's a gladiator. Romans will kill. And with that, we head outside the Colosseum to see where else the Romans, Romans. competed. Just over the Palatine Hill, home to rich Romans and emperors in ancient Rome, the Circus Maximus hosted horse racing and athletic competitions on a circular track longer than six football fields. And they used to have three different races. Two horses, three horses, and four horses races. Crowds over 100,000 people deep watched as chariots raced by, bumping and jockeying to get in front. And of course, you know, what do you do? You tend to push everybody else away from the track. So no rules. And the kids are ready to go. On your mark, get set. While it is fun, I seem to be missing that jugglers and fortune tellers that strolled around the crowds in ancient times. Didn't they say there was a circus down there? I took the kids to see the circus. After a long day taking in the sights of Rome. My hand's still in there. We head back to the apartment to manja like the locals. So there's a movement in Italy called slow food, and that's cooking it nice and leisurely, enjoying your meal instead of rushing in and out of a restaurant that mass produces food. Slow food also has the health benefits of using fresh food and those that are easy to come by at the local street markets here in Italy. We got some fresh mozzarella cheese. They sell it in huge bags here in the store. We got some fresh tomatoes, the bread of the day, which we sprinkled with fresh tomatoes, garlic, butter, and Pecino Romano cheese. Pecino Romano, it's good cheese. So one of the nice things about staying in an apartment rental or a villa like this one is that you could spread out. There's plenty of room for the whole family and you have room to cook so you don't have to go out with the kids every night. You can make your own meals right here in the apartment. And you can create real memories making the food together. And fast food. Pasta with red sauce. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got it. Fast food. And that's called slow food. And this is called fast food. And talking about the day. Before a gladiator's first fight, he has a big feast with pasta and bread and 
lots of different kinds of food. It's these bonding moments reflecting on your day, talking together, joking together, and make family travel such an important opportunity. Manja. Manja. Today we're immersing ourselves in more of Rome's political history at the Roman Forum. Before we learn to live the history at a local school, but don't worry, kids, this is no ordinary school. You'll see. What are they doing? Construction on the Roman Forum began during Republican times, but it maintained importance during the Imperial Emperor times as well. The Forum is made up of roadways, plazas, and markets. And is dotted by temples and monuments. This is where the soldiers paraded the spoils of war, and where everyday citizens came to socialize and do business. Nowadays, it's hard to picture what the Roman Forum must have looked like, as it's mostly fallen over columns and pieces of buildings. This is where that book I talked about earlier, Rome Reconstructed, really comes in handy. That's called the Roman Forum. You want to see what it looked like back in Rome, ancient Rome? Da, da, da. So that's how it used to look. It was like this big building with all the pillars, but now. Isn't that weird? Oh, the bus is little... more white than I thought it would be. You could just imagine the Romans walking around, doing everyday business here. The boys love the vibrancy these street performers bring to the ruins <laughs> and wish they could be gladiators. And in Rome, they can. <laughs> Pizza. But first, a kid's dream lunch. Easy to find here in Italy. Grazie a te. Thank you. Ciao. Many restaurants charge a service fee to sit down, so takeaway is a cheap option. This is called takeaway. It's cheap because you don't have to sit down, and sitting down costs money. Topped off by the ultimate Italian dessert, our kids hunt for it all around the world. It's ginormous. Manta and. Fragola. But here in Italy, the stands are everywhere. This gelato is so good. I think these boys would search the world over gelato. for that perfect gelato. Let's go find some. Gelato, 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 Our lunch break is over and it's time for school, kids. But this is no ordinary class. What are they doing? Here, students of all ages can train to be gladiators. Wait, we get to do this? it or watching it? So we're going to get trained and then be fought? Yep. Oh, I get to be a gladiator. I get to be a gladiator. You're going down. After touring the museum where the kids learn about the expansion of the Roman Empire. Fire! 
and its armies. The legionaries were the professional soldiers of the Roman army. The legionary wore a later sandals, wore a later belt, cingulum in Latin, with metallic strips for noise and for decoration, and wore a red tunic. His arm fell off. This is a real helmet in first century after Christ. With some understanding of gladiator life under their belt, they suit up and are ready to begin their training. So in gladiator times, um, there were lots of fights in the Colosseum and different uh, little stage places. Lots of the gladiators were slaves and also in ancient, ancient Rome, gladiating was a job for people to actually get paid for it. And not only gladiators fought other people, but they fought lions, tigers, bears. Oh my! Well, now that they know so much about gladiators, it's time to start the physical training. To learn to be a gladiator, you have to go through a lot of rough training, going through sandbags, and if you don't try hard enough, you'll feel the sting of a whip on your back. Well, maybe back then. Here it may just be heckles from the onlookers. They start their training by jumping over obstacles. This is gonna burn off all the gelato. And running through sandbags. From here to here. Run fast. Okay? Go, go, go. Learning to put together defensive weapons. Today, use it for the tank. In Roman time, for the horse. Okay, you assemble it this. Okay, one, two, three. I think you gotta stand on. Something's wrong, something's wrong. Okay, let's just hold it. And the art of hand to hand combat. Learning first on wooden swords. We who are about to use wooden swords salute you. Stomach. Stomach. Neck. And then it's on to mock battles. Go! Oh. Oh. I lost the sword. <laughs> Go! Yeah, no got three! Three to one. Three to one. It's time to move on to real swords. Heavy metal swords. But don't worry, they're not too sharp. And he teaches them some fancy moves. Turn. Always. Oh, perfect. Okay. okay. That's fun. That's called fun. Then the gladiators put on a show for us. <laughs> Using some of the moves they just taught us. And the kids are there to play emperor. It's so much fun playing gladiator, it's hard to get the kids to leave. This is the Roman citizen. You are now free gladiator. Can I do it again? But the heat of the day is at its peak. And well, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. When the hot summer sun is beating down, Romans head to the central park of Rome, Borghese Gardens. When 
the crowds and the heat of the day gets too much in Rome, and it will, you can come here to the Villa Borghese, beautiful green park area, and lots of stuff to do for families, lots of stuff to do for kids. Everyone can relax in the green open parks, rent a bike, which we're gonna go do now. Let's go. Here you can rent bikes and rowboats to explore under the cover of the cool shade trees. After a relaxing afternoon spent in the Borghese Gardens, we head back to Piazza Navona, where our apartment is, which is also a hot spot for local families where we have dinner at one of the outdoor cafes. Italian boys, this pizza is boys. Gnocchi, Sorrentino, cheese and tomato. Where the boys can run around watching street performers. I totally thought that was a real statue. And buy fun gadgets and toys from the many sellers in the courtyard here. We're going to use minimum five years this one. <laughs> Two euros. Oh, dear. <laughs> for your last price, ten euros for you. <laughs> A laser pointer. Woo! Da, da, da. How much? Two euros. Pretty good price, right? Piazza Navona has a fun carnival-like atmosphere at night. And we can sit back, relax, and take in the sights. As I sit there watching the boys running around with local kids, chasing their glowing toys, I think of what a great place Rome is for kids. Learning history through iconic historical sites like the Colosseum and the Roman Forum. And living history at the Gladiator School. And learning to live like a local, eating slow food, and watching the local Italian life stroll by in the piazza. Yeah. 